Hey, brothers and sisters, by the grace of the Most High God, hallelujah, this is your favorite brother from another mother. Let me know if you can hear me all right. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters, Benji, Anna, Dottie, praise God, sister, Evelyn, Bianca, Care Bear, Carolyn, God is holy, brother Daniel, praise God tonight. I know Gunny's on here somewhere too. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Um, it's going to be all serious. Once I start rolling, Brother Parrish, Sister Carolyn, I'll start rolling with it here. We're going to keep moving. Of course, we can fellowship, but we need to keep it serious, brothers and sisters. We got a Elizabeth, how are you guys doing? Hallelujah. I know it's uh, not, maybe 9 or 10 o'clock at night there, Julia. How are you, Southern Mommies? Hello. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Well, the Lord has given me so many details. In the last 24 hours, I was going to make a video last night, but it was storming and storming. Uh, and I was still hearing from the Lord. So I decided to wait till today. But during the night, the Lord gave me an awesome rapture dream, uh, the greatest dream I ever had. And uh, I'll try to remember what I can. Oh, Anna, how are you? Praise God. Yes, Steve and Crystal, how are you? I'll try to remember all I can. And I want to start with what the Lord showed me yesterday and put it all together. I'm just going to flow with it, okay? So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit, for your message. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts of understanding, Lord God. Hallelujah. And eyes to see. Hallelujah. In these last days, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. In this last hour of the church age, in the mighty name of Jesus. So you guys, uh, Lord, bless this message in Jesus' name. Deborah, how you doing? So the Lord... Um, has been giving me dreams and, and things lately. Uh, and you guys who are watching me, you know what I'm talking about. The Lord is building and adding to that and giving me confirmations at a level that's beyond, it's just unbelievable. So as a matter of fact, when I got up today, um, I've got this uh, topical Bible that uh, it's every day. It's like a calendar, you know, and in the Bible, it's got a topic and Bible verses for that topic every day of the, of the year. And I usually read it at night. <clears throat> this topical Bible. But today when I got up, the Lord is like, look in the topical Bible. Um, Cause I normally check the weather when I first get up before I check, you know, do anything else. And the Lord's like, no, go check it. I opened it up September the 20th. The date, the topic for today, the subject was, is rapture. So I don't use, I'm not, I don't need confirmations like that, but it was just at a whole nother level from the Lord. So anyway, I'm going to get into this. So let me go. I want The Lord wants me to read a text to you first, okay? And so we're going to kind of go in reverse. We're going to start with the book of Revelation, chapter 21. I'm going to read a few verses. And the other verses that the Lord gave me in the dreams and the things he showed me, I'll be sharing it all. I'm just going to do boom, just go nonstop, okay? The summation of everything with interpretation of what the Lord has shown me. Paulette, how are you? Praise God. I didn't get a chance to message you, to any of you guys, to tell you to be on here. Only one brother who was messaging me last night, um, uh, two brothers that I contacted who I've just spoken to about the rapture in the last few days. I messaged them real quick. Hallelujah. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, Revelation chapter 21, starting at verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God wiped away all the tears from their eyes, and there was no more death. I'm thinking of one sister right now who she knows who she is. She's been surrounded by death in the last year. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. Did you hear me? You know who you are for everybody, but particularly one sister I'm thinking of right now. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, write all these words that are true and faithful. I've been trying to quote from this verse while I was doing my videos. I didn't know exactly where it was. You know, the true and faithful witness and from this text. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son or daughter. But the fearful, unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So I got to start with what the Lord showed me yesterday, last night, 
and then I'm just going to go. Okay, so last night I was doing some studying and stuff, and the Lord just stopped me and said, you know, I want you to go online and I want you to look at some video about Rosh Hashanah, which is head of the year, and the biblical name is Yom Turah, the Feast of Trumpets. I've talked about that before. You guys know I know about those things, but, I, you know, as a Christian, Gentile Christians, we don't really need to celebrate those things. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not required for us. And, you know, and there's people that are legalistic about that. This is not about that. The Lord told me to look at a video about it. So there's one that I've it's come up in my feed before. I've seen this relaxing walks in Jerusalem. It's the name of the channel, something like that. And um, it was the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, and it was day one. And this was made just four days ago, whatever it was, five days ago. And uh, so I started watching it. And the Lord told me out of the blue, which I mean, what do I know? Okay, but the Lord told me that the Feast of Trumpets was actually yesterday, the 19th was the actual Feast of Trumpets. Now, that's what the Lord told me out of the blue. So I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I'm not involved in, you know, Jewish feast days and setting the dates and all that. That's what the Lord told me. And I was like, okay. Okay, Lord. <laughs> you know, so he said it began the 19th, but, you know, I want you to watch this video. So I started watching it. And uh, the guy was, I've seen some of his other videos just walking around Jerusalem, you know, and you could see it maybe a year or two ago. So that's probably why it was, you know, it was easy to find the video. It was the same guy. And, uh, when I, and so this is what the Lord told me today about that. I better stop. The Lord told me today, and I, and I was telling my wife, I was telling my wife what I'm telling you now. And then I said, well, you know, Israel is, is, is not following the right calendar. They're not following the right thing. And then the Lord just told me, you know what? That summarizes Israel in one sentence. They're not following the right thing. They're not following the Lord. They're not following the Lamb of God. They're not following even what Moses told them. They're, they're just missing it. They're off by one beat, you know. They're, as a matter of fact, they're one week off. They're, they're seven off of where they're supposed to be. So, I mean, you could describe Israel in one sentence. And that's the wisdom of the Lord right there, brothers and sisters, that is just God can make profound things so simple. And that's an example. So, anyway, the Lord said the, the real Yom Tu is the 19th. I was like, okay, whatever you say, Lord, how do I, what do I know? And so then I started watching the video and it, he was walking through the old city, uh, first through the Armenian quarter uh, of Jerusalem's in four quarters. There's a four for you. And uh, thank you for that, Anna. Yes, please hit the like button. So this needs to get out because we're going to get into the rapture. This is all together. So starting within 24 hours, this all happened within 24 hours. Started last night, like maybe nine o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever it was. So um, in the video, there is a, a place there that I recognize, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the, it's in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem and it's down in the ground. You know, it's like the, the level, you know, where they're walking is at the level of modern day times, right? And the farther you go down, the further back in history you go, right? So there's a, a place there where it goes way down. There's five pillars there. And I, I thought that was the Pool of Siloam or something. I, I can't, I don't, I can't remember. I've seen a picture of that place before, but it's way low below street level. It's like down in a lower area, like 20 feet down, to, you know, three or four or five meters down. And, and this guy was walking past there and look, and he stopped and looked down in there was all these young women, young adult women, like college age students. I will say high school, college age students. They were like adults, but young, uh, young adults all women, all girls, and they were singing in Hebrew. And okay, maybe it is Hezekiah's tunnel. And they were singing some Jewish song about the Rosh Hashanah. It was a religious song and they were dancing and singing. And I kept saying, why? It's just all girls. I mean, it's not the Welling Wall. At the Welling Wall, they separate men and women. This is a different place. And they're down in there, like at the level of when Jesus walked the earth and they're singing and praising God. And then all of a sudden, when I was watching it, the Holy Spirit fell on me. And the Lord began to speak to me all these things that I'm going to talk about. And then the dream was the capstone of all that, of the rapture. The greatest dream I ever had, 10 times more greater than any dream I've ever had. Anything I've ever shared on YouTube, this is 10 times higher than that, brothers and sisters. So, I mean, I was shocked. It woke me up and I was like jumping around when I, I mean, I jumped up and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I was like, this is really happening, you know, the rapture. So. Today, the Lord told me that those young women are like young maidens. 
They're like maidens. So they're dressed in white and they represent supposed to be like the chastened bride. You know, they're unmarried. They're maidens. They're young women. You know, they represent like Mary, the Virgin Mary. It represents like uh, the bride of Christ. Of course, these were Jewish girls and they were dancing. And that was the start of this when the Lord began to speak to me. So I'd written down some notes a little bit from last night and uh, I got to get into it. And, and I'm going to try not to forget anything if I can, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So again, oh, let me just go into this other part. So there's 153 fish that's harvested at the end of Gospel of John. Okay, I'm just going to go with this and, I, and I'll come back to those things and interconnect them as the Lord gives me, reminds me. So there's 153 fish and everybody wants to know what's 153 fish, right? So the Lord reminded me, this was yesterday, that I had the dream of the Lord walking across the Sea of Galilee. And the Bible even says Galilee of the Gentiles. Uh, Matthew quotes the Old Testament where it says, you know, the, the, in, in the, the border of Ephraim and Manasseh, you know, in the Galilee of the Gentiles, a great light was seen. You know, when Jesus walked there at the first time, it said this was fulfilled that. Like the man of Gadarene, those are Gentile people. There's a Decapolis, they call it. Decapolis, 10 cities, Gentile cities there right by the Sea of Galilee in the time of Jesus. And it's a Galilee of the Gentiles. So the Lord was saying this is like uh, representing well, the Sea of Galilee is representing the Gentile. The water is the Gentile nations that I've been talking about. The, the sea and water is the nations. The land is Israel. Okay, so we know that. So we talked about that. So the 153 is the final harvest of the Gentile age. So in Luke chapter 5, they throw their nets into the sea. And then they get so many that the net begins to break. And then Jesus, uh, Peter gets the revelation at that time. You know, he says, depart from me, Lord, because I'm an unclean man. You know, Luke chapter five, I think it is. So then here at the end of the Gospels, the last chapter of John, Jesus is standing on the beach. What were the disciples doing? What did Jesus tell the disciples? Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So that's another way we know that the fish are men. I will make you fishers of men. So fish represent men. Gentiles, to me. I guess it could all, you know, what I'm saying now, I'm not, I wouldn't dogmatically say, oh, it can't include Jewish people to get saved, but from the ocean, from the water, Gentiles, okay, are harvested. And, you know, look at the flood of Noah. Noah and his people were saved. God sent a flood to destroy all the wicked people. So people that are taken out of the water, you know, it's like, you know, the water is like the chaos. In Hebrew, it means chaos, the letter for water. Uh, was it a mem or whatever it is? Uh, it doesn't matter, but it represents chaos. And, you know, water is chaotic as I've been talking and the Lord's been building on this. The river of living water, it's a river is a controlled water. It's channeled. So water by itself is chaos, but when it's controlled or channeled by God, it's a blessing. So we need a spring of living water, well springs of living water. We need water to live, but water can also drown you. Water can also kill you. A tsunami the flood of Noah, all that. So what in the, the 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 Red Sea killed Pharaoh's army, but the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea because God controlled the water, right? He separated the water, made a way for his people. So it's like Moses was taken out of the water. I've been talking about that. Drawn out of the water. So anyone that's pulled out of the water is saved from the chaos, saved from the destruction, saved from drowning, saved from dying. You know, like when we're baptized to be buried with Christ and raised with him. So going under the water is like being dead. So this is a constant theme through the whole word of God. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody teach this. I'm sure they have, but the Lord's giving it to us right now. So Jesus was harvesting. I saw him get sucking up into his body all these fish from the Sea of Galilee. And he said it was the Gentiles, half of his body, the other half is Israel. So John 21, see, John wrote Revelation. I've talked about this before. James, the brother of John, was the first apostle to die. John was the last, like the Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the church age and the end of the church age, the book, like the book of Acts, okay, the beginning and the end. So at the end of the gospel of John, here's Jesus standing on the land, like Israel. He is the, God, the king of Israel, the God of Israel. There he is speaking. Peter and those guys were supposed to be catching men. So it kind of backslid, 
kind of lukewarm because Peter had denied the Lord. He's kind of running from the Lord, hiding from the Lord. There he was. He said, hey, I'm going to go fishing for earthly fish. They didn't catch anything. Why? Jesus said, John 15, abide in me that I might abide in you, because apart from me, you can do nothing. So Peter and those other disciples didn't catch anything. Why? Because Jesus wasn't with them. But then see, so this is a directive for us in the last minutes, and like for people doing ministry like me or for all of us. They hadn't borne no fruit, unsuccessful. But then Jesus gave them the word. Jesus spoke. Throw your net on the other side, on the right side. Throw your net on the right side, the strong side, right? Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The left side also means chaos. It also means sin and all this. Sinister is the, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in anatomy. You know, the, oh, the eyes are OD and OS. You know, OD is uh, right, the right eye, the left and the S stands for sinister. It's where we get the word sinister. It's like the evil eye and all that. Even though we know there's left-handed people, but... And that's fine. And myself, I'm left-handed. But that's, you know, in those days, the common people thought, well, if you're left-handed, there's something wrong with you, right? But we know better. But God is using that. The right hand is a right hand of strength because almost everybody's right-handed. So that's why it represents that. And your left hand is your weakness, sin, temptation, whatever, or something like that, from the view of what God's trying to get across to us. So Jesus said, cast the net on the right side. And they did, and then they caught that 153 fish. And the net didn't break. They got it up. They got to, and, and when the fish were caught, John said, it's the Lord. See, John, he had the revelation. He knew it was Jesus. They went to the shore. Jesus fed them fish and bread. He sustained them. He provided for them. And then Jesus told Peter that he was going to be crucified. He described to him in euphemisms that you would be crucified. And I talk about this all the time, but not from this angle. Then Peter said, well, what about him, Lord? Pointing to John, who was the last disciple. James was the first, his brother, to sit at the right hand and the left of Jesus. So I guess we could say John, James is at the left, the weak side, and John at the right at the end, right? So like the bookends of the disciples. And so the Lord said, what if I will for him to live till I come back? What is that to you? See? So, I mean, that's why I keep thinking more and more. John will be one of the two witnesses, you know, from the New Testament. Maybe. Who knows? Because we don't have the record of him dying. They said that he died of old age, but, you know, I don't know that. That's a tradition. All the other disciples were martyred but him. Hallelujah. So whatever. Let's keep moving. It doesn't matter to us at this point. So the Lord wanted me to share those things with you about the 153. So praise God. So the other day, uh, you know, they said that Moses' nickname was the great fish. In the in the Jewish tradition, they called him the Gadol Dag, the great fish, uh, or Doug in modern Hebrew. Why? Because he was taken out of the water, brothers and sisters. I just learned that yesterday. I never heard that before from our Dutch Uncle John. Uh, the Lord had led me to watch one of his videos again. It's been a long, long time, and he was talking about that. So there's no doubt about it, brothers and sisters. So this is the harvest of the Gentiles, the final harvest. Okay. All right. So there's so many other things. But I just want to go to the, to the dream that I had. So in the dream that I had uh, in the very beginning, I was there and there was a, there was a, a preacher and he was, and I, I, I guess it means something besides just the color of the guy. It was a white guy. As two preachers, one was black and one was white. So I think it means spiritually, you know, not necessarily their skin color. Maybe it does. I mentioned in a video a long time ago, for some reason, there seems to be a lot of prophets who are black who are also very effeminate. When you listen to them speak, somebody put some of the names of some of them in the comments. When I'm, I did a video about this about a year ago, mentioned it. There's many effeminate very openly queen they act like queens or princesses or whatever but they were born male and black prophets in the pentecostal movement in the charismatic movement i don't know why that is but it is and they're like i mean anyone that listened to them would say yeah hey this guy is so demon possessed and that they do the prosperity prophesying there's several of them anyway in my dream there was a white preach pastor who came to me and said, there's this other this prophet of God 
who's trying to seduce me and get me to join him. He's going to become a transgender and he's going to start doing pole dancing in the church and teaching all the people to do pole dancing. And he wants me to do it too. And why don't, can you help me? So I was like, okay. So I went there with him and I just talked to this guy, but the, the guy didn't reveal that to me in the natural, the, the, the black prophet. He was acting totally, trying to act totally normal around me. And while I was talking to him and the other guy was there, the, the white preacher, he was a pastor and we were there and other people. And, but I discerned that the guy who was my friend was also, he got converted. Uh, he, he backslid and he was trying to keep it a secret. He was also brought down by this spirit and he didn't want me to know it, but it already, he already had been. And then also, of course, the other guy, I could discern it spiritually that they were doing this, whatever, pole dancing, the whole nine yards. And they were turning the church into like a nightclub or whatever. It was totally insane. So I was like, wow. So then the next scene, I was going to a church, a great big mega church. I was going to go in and preach the gospel. And three security guards met me at the door. One was a was a was a white man. I, I don't know why this matters, but that's what that was. There was a white man that had this beard and a goatee, and he you know he kind of looked almost like Colonel Sanders, KFC, but younger. And then there was two, uh, two black guys who were younger, maybe in their thirties, that were with him. The three of them, and they were all three on these motorized scooters, and they came out front, and on the front of their vehicles they had these orbs that inside had these like pieces of gold and they all looked almost like a goldfish but it was like a tube and on the end was it looked like a set of weights like a dumbbell but they were glass like a crystal balls but inside were these gold things that were turning it looked like goldfish in there almost or like pieces of gold or something and i said what is this that you've got and the first they told me you can't go in here anymore this is not a church anymore this is a center for enlightenment. That's what they told me. And I looked behind them and I saw the black prophet and I saw white, the white preacher. And I saw lots of other preachers in there. And they were doing all kinds of uh, like meditating and all this wacky stuff. And then they wouldn't let me in, these three security guards. And they, they, they started pushing me with their scooters. And I said, what are these things on your scooters, the, these orb things? And they said, this is the magic we use to keep the spirit of the church out of here. You know, our powerful magic keeps out the spirit of the church. So I just started laughing. I was like, what? I said, you guys can't stop God. Are you insane? And then they were pushing me backwards on their scooters. And it's like I was on the front of one of their, their scooters and they were going really fast. But I could have gotten off the scooter. I could have stopped them. But the Lord was telling me, no, just let them do what they want to do. Let them do what they want to do. Don't stop them. I was like, OK, Lord said, it's already too late for these people. It's already too late. I said, okay, Lord. And then I just rode on the front of those scooters and they were driving me like speed of light. And then I got to a place that was a train station. You guys remember I had the dream of the Gentiles and the Jewish people following the train tracks. And it was like at, at the Holocaust or whatever, a few months ago. Well, this was where trains were arriving. And the Lord reminded me, of a dream I had where we were in a submarine. It was the church. You guys remember that? And it was a submarine and it was going down, down, down. And the people piloting the submarine were telling me this submarine's going to get to a certain debt and then it's just going to explode. It's going to implode from the pressure of the sea. How about there you go again? The ocean, chaos, evil, the flood, the judgment of God, the Gentile world, the wicked world, the flood. So we were in a submarine underwater. That was like a year ago. You guys remember that? And, and, and the pilots of the ship, of the submarine said, it's not what we can do. It's going to go, go down, 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 down. We can't pull it up. It's going to implode and everybody's going to be dead. But I didn't accept that. I went and grabbed the controls of the, of the submarine and I began to pull it up and pilot it. And it began to go faster and faster and faster. And we popped up to the surface and we could see, remember that? And then as we were going, we came to Hong Kong and there were ships from all over the world entering into Hong Kong. And Hong Kong means pleasant grove, um, something like that. And I shared it in that video at that time. So this reminded me of that. But this was people on trains. 
I had ridden on the front of their carts and they, you know, and then I jumped off and there I was, and there was a wall there and it was like the end of the terminus, like in a main train station, like in Germany, they have those all over the place, you know, like in Munich, you go there and it's the end of the line, you know, and then the train goes and then behind you, there's no more track. That's the end of the line. It's like the rapture. So we're there. And so the theme that we need to get, there's a huge theme about this that the Lord wants us to get. When I talked about yesterday, the Lord had told me to James and John, and then the fish net breaking at the beginning of the gospels in Luke five. And at the end of the gospels, John 21, this is about the first and the last. And those who will be last will be first. And those who are first will be last. Okay. So when I get there, it's a big theme in all this from the Lord for us. So when I get there to the train terminal, there's all these chairs. And there's people sitting in the chairs all the way up to the front. And I was like, well, I guess I'll get in the back. And then there was another one other guy there that was also a pastor who made it. A preacher who made it. Very few. 99% of the people were Christians, but not many preachers. That's a whole, That's what I'm talking about. Those preachers that got caught up in New Age. Most of the preachers. Very few made it. So this guy was higher than me in the Lord. I don't know who he was. I knew that he was a higher rank in Christ than I was. And so I said, well, I, he'll be on the front row and I'll be two or three rows. I said, I'll be on the third row. That's what I said. And then the guy turned to me and said, no, come on up to the front row. And then more rows were created in the front. And the Lord spoke to me again at that time. Those are last to be first and those are first to be last. New rows appeared all the way up to the wall. And then he and I, and there was just a few other preachers. I mean, just a handful that made it. The first few rows were like for preachers, ministers. And then behind that, there was a multitude of rows. I don't know how many thousands of, uh, of Christians. It was just innumerable. And so many that kept the seat, you know, kept pushing us toward the wall, but we didn't get crushed by the wall. At first I thought we're going to get crushed against this wall, but it, it's not, you know, it stopped. That was the completeness of the, of the harvest. And okay, so then the next scene began. So the next scene began. And uh, there's so many things to tell. The Lord gave me, oh, this is off the wall. But I was there and I was in this uh, cabana, our copala, our cabana, a white gazebo. It's another name for it. And there were four people in there. I didn't recognize the other three people, but two were women. And one was another man. The other man, I think I, I know he's from a particular YouTube channel and he is a hyper gracer. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, that was there. It's extreme hyper gracer that the Lord had already told me a long time ago. And I'm saying it now that he's, he's living in sin. He's a backslider. And that's why he's a hyper gracer. So it's up to the Lord. So there were four of us as, I guess, watchmen or watch people because there were two women there, too. I didn't speak to them. I didn't recognize them. Uh, I just recognized, I saw one was a heavy set white woman with dark brown hair. That's all I know about her. I didn't really get a, I didn't look at her face. And um, and the other ones I didn't get a good look at. There's two of the other three people. So I believe it's two women and then two men. And I was one of the men. I was on the end. And this, what do we call it? Gazebo. White gazebo on a hill. So we're overlooking a valley. In the valley were hundreds or thousands of children in white robes and some adults. So this is just insane. I mean, this is truth. This is truth that I never would have imagined. So from the youngest to the old, they were raptured from the youngest to the oldest. It was like a wave from the youngest to the oldest. So I'll say that first. And the Lord had told me, that like when he said he was without sin, cast the first stone, they began to walk away from the oldest to the youngest, right? In John chapter eight. So it's like, those will be last to be first and those will first to be last. That kind of a thing. Again, that's the theme the Lord wants us to get. So the children, the Lord gave me the interpretation today. The children represent those who just got saved. The older the people were, the older they were in Christ. Okay, so I'm going to tell what happened. So you're going to get this. Many of you guys have been Christians for a long time. So you better get this. The babies, the children, they got raptured right off the bat real fast. But it was like a wave and all the children were gone. And then it's like all hell was about to break loose. And 
everyone was afraid, you know? And so what I heard, I heard the song is like a hymnal version of the song from Psalm 18. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. That was the song I heard. And it's a song. And that psalm just happens to be about the end times. I didn't ever pay attention to that. I didn't even remember that it's in Psalm 18. So the Lord gave me from this text after I woke up. So in the text, I felt led by the Lord. I heard the Bible verse, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So at first I was trying to be cool because it was really getting scary. I saw the children going. And I could see in my in the spirit like a wave going around the world of people being raptured. And I was like, I saw people that weren't getting raptured. And I was like, you know, just like any of you guys would do, if you have any sense, you would say, Lord, don't forget me. You know, hey, Lord, start repenting, right? So at first I was trying to be calm and cool, but then I started saying, well, I, I better get, I better get real serious, real fast. It's not a time to be cool, you know? So I got down on, on the, on the floor of the gazebo on my face. And I heard that song because I didn't know what I was just saying, Lord, forgive me my sins and all that kind of stuff. Then I heard the song. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So I was like, that's what the Lord is saying. Start calling on the Lord. So I just started saying, Jesus save me. And when I did that, all the, the adults that were in the valley, they started saying it too. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. That's it. Not focused on, you know, thinking of individual sins or anything like that. All the, the Lord also reminded me of the Bible verse, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So I began to call on the name of the Lord. And then I could see in, my, in the spirit that I was seeing people around the world, I could hear. Screams of people who were left behind in terror. And then other, and when people saw that, they started calling on the name of the Lord real fast. Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. Forgive me. This kind of a thing. Everyone was yelling and the rapture was happening. And then while I was waiting for the wave to reach me, I started seeing Bible verses and hearing the voice of the Lord with those Bible verses. Jesus Christ. Later on, I heard the Father's voice, which I'll tell in a minute. So I started hearing the Lord's voice, and he was saying, Blessed are those who take part in the first resurrection. All who call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him, and they are saved. All these Bible words, I was seeing it. Boom, 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 boom. It's like a machine gun. And it was like, you know, the words were like follow the bouncing ball. It was highlighted. And I don't even remember all the verses right now off the top of my head. I had to pray, you know, because it was just like a zip, 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 zip. And then when the wave hit, I was caught up. And then I heard the voice of the Father. And it was like the se it was the seven thunders of God. And I could not make out what God was saying. It was the mystery of the seven thunders. And it was like, I could almost make out his words, but I couldn't. I was like, man, I could just almost make out what he's saying. But his voice was like a thunder, like a rolling thunder. It was like a whole lot more powerful and magnified than when the Lord, the Spirit of God speaking in my spirit, you know, I will call upon the Lord and all that. A whole different thing. Okay, so let me go back to me and the gazebo. This is a confirmation. Every day almost the Lord keeps showing me for weeks now, months now, Revelation 3.11. I always talk about Revelation 3.10. Because you have patiently kept my word, I will keep you from or out of the hour of temptation to come upon the whole earth, to try all those that live upon the earth, said Jesus. But 11 says, behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to what you have. See that no man take your crown, right? So the Lord's been giving me that. I've been talking about that. Okay. So you guys remember the dream I had the other day. Now, this is only God because I would never have in a million years think of these things or remember these things or understand these. I told the dream. I'll tell the short version. My dad's best friend, he went to school with from the first grade. 
So the interpretation is Jesus, the Father's best friend. He was giving me these four fruits, which were like apples, and he poured honey on them. Of course, Rosh Hashanah. I didn't know this. Their tradition, not in the Bible, their tradition, they eat apples with honey on it for Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Hallelujah. So I talked about that. The four fruits, and I, and I had a dream of having four races to run that were short races. They were all eights. And the Lord told me today, the eights are new beginning. Eight means new beginning. There was eight on Noah's Ark. Noah went from the old world to the new world. We're going from the church age to the, to the rapture, to the millennial reign of Christ. We're going through and out of the flood, the tribulation. So that's what the eights mean. Eight means double portion of the four too, right? And all that. I've talked about those things in the last several weeks. So the Lord had just given me that interpretation today. So I had four races to run. Each of them was like 800 meters, you know, uh, one point, one kilometer point zero eight meters, one kilometer point eight meters, whatever it was. It's four of them, the longest one being 1 1.8 kilometers. Anyway, and that's just before the rapture. Four seasons. And the Lord keeps showing about one fat cow. Okay. So last night, the Lord spoke to me, which I didn't mention. It's coming back to me now. He spoke to me in Hebrew, which is this word is ufara, ufara. So I know the word para, p, para is cow. But when you write it in a sentence and you use two different words together, like if I said a chicken and a cow, and I put the cow last in Hebrew, it's fara. So when it would be ufara. So when I heard that in my spirit last night from the Lord, after I watched those young women and all that that I talked about earlier, I was like, that word fire, I don't know what that word is. I, you know, I said, what is that? And so it means and the cow and the cow. So the one fat cow. So that's why I believe the Lord was telling me that the new year of God's calendar began last night. Last night. So the 19th. So the one fat cow, one fat year. I know many people want the rapture to be today. Maybe it will be. This is what I'm sharing with you. Is what the Lord gave me. This is the, the truth. This mighty harvest, the 153, the final harvest of the church is going to be done under the direct directives of Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to call out to his disciples and bring in this final harvest and the net won't break and all that. You know, none of them will be lost. They're all coming in. The final harvest that was behind me at the train station. And there's four parts of it for my part, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you. So the Lord gave me lots of other stuff. So in that gazebo, I was wearing a racing outfit. I had another dream. I remember now me with a racing outfit or something, but I don't remember now, but just in the last few months. Anyway, I was wearing a racing outfit, race car driver suit, like a fire suit. And I was wearing a candy apple red helmet. Helmet. Okay, so here's the story about that. I mentioned this years ago in my videos, I think. My dad, when I was a kid, see, my father's best friend is the one who gave me the apples, okay? My father, my earthly dad, he actually drove a race car for two years when I was a kid on a dirt track. Well, not because I was in the first and second grade. And I went there and saw it. I was old enough to go with my mom and my brothers, and we watched it. And uh, my dad had a candy apple red helmet and a fire suit. I was wearing the uniform of my father for the race. Okay, that's one thing. I had my dream. I didn't know what was up. I'm like, why am I wearing this? This is insane because I was in a dream. So, but here's the deal. When I woke up, God is just so smarter than us. Can you imagine God planned this for when I was a kid for today? Off the hook. The place, the, the Lord asked me, what was the name of the racetrack where your dad raced? Because he told me, oh, this is your father's uniform. Yeah. Where's the name of the place? It's 311 Speedway. Highway 311 in North Carolina. 311 Speedway is the name of the place. A dirt track. And it's in a place called Madison, North Carolina. So the Lord even told me, go look up Madison. I was like, everything the Lord gave me means something in this situation. This is crazy. So I looked up Madison. Madison means son of Matthew. You know, well, my first name is Matthew, but Matthew means gift of God. So I was like, okay, 
gift of God. So God gave me this revelation as a gift. But then the Lord gave me the text, Ephesians chapter 2, verse, you know, we quote that all the time, you know, by grace you're saved through faith, not of your own, but a gift of God. Not by works, least any man shall boast. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. It's not by works, but it's the gift of God. So the gift of God, of course, is salvation. But God gives grace to the humble. Why did I get on the ground? Why did all the people get on the ground and start calling upon the name of the Lord? On their face. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Prone position, right? On their face. Because God gives grace to the humble. And he resists the proud, brothers and sisters. So I want to say this to you from the Lord. No matter what kind of wacky hyper grace doctrine you might believe or don't believe. This is the year of separation. God will separate the bride from the demonic dead church. And it's time for you to be holy and come out from among them. Because the Lord had turned those guys over, those pastors, over to a reprobate mind. He said, let them go. This is a warning from the Lord. For us Christians, it is a time of testing and separation. So yes, we can celebrate the rapture. Those babies, those new Christians, those children, little kids that were in the valley in front of me that I was watching over. I was a watchman or watching over. I, maybe there's the people I led to the Lord, whatever. And those other three people with me, they were raptured, boom. And then the adult, adults had to start calling upon the repenting, who much is given, much is required. So in the gazebo, the Lord told me to look at the other people in the gazebo. I saw the heavy set, chunky white woman with dark brown hair. She was on her face, but she was on the bench. We were each of us had our own bench. She was on her face on the bench. The next person, another woman who I just glanced at, don't have a description. She was laying on her face also on her bench. The man that was beside me, who I recognize as a hypergracer from YouTube, he was in fear. He was sitting there with his mouth wide open in fear, in horror of what was happening. And I told him, what's wrong with you? Call upon the name of the Lord. He refused to, brothers and sisters. He refused to call upon the name of the Lord. He was left behind. Just as I read that text to you guys from Revelation 21 that we just read. I'm going to go back and read that verse. This is for him and for all those people. Verse 8, Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful, he was fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their place in the lake of fire that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. One of these alleged watchmen. There's several of them like that. That's why the Lord had me go over there on these different channels and be unagreeable un with them. Not coming in agreement with false doctrine. That's why the Lord sent me over there. They heard the truth. They're accountable to God. Just like all of us, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go back to read Psalm 18 for a minute. Something else the Lord spoke to me. Yeah, I'm going to keep reading. Ezekiel 24, verse 14. So the Lord gave me confirmation just over the rooftop, brothers and sisters. Here's a verse the Lord gave me today about all this. As I was saying, Lord, I was still like, well, you know, I'm trying to be cautious. And before I say anything, I was like, Lord, now make sure I got this right. Is this what's happening about those pastors and all this stuff? And the Lord spoke this to me. Ezekiel 24, verse 14. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass and I will do it. I will not go back. Neither will I spare. Neither will I repent. According to thy ways and according to thy doing shall they judge thee, says the Lord God. Who's going to judge you? The devil's people, brothers and sisters. And the judgment of the tribulation. So this is something else. Okay, oh yeah, something else the Lord told me. After I got raptured and I heard the thunders of the Lord, I saw in the sky a giant number 39. And I was like, well, you know, the Lord had showed me 36. And 36 and 36 is 72. And 72 and 72 is 144. And then, of course, there's 12 in there. Three 12s is 36 and all that. Had to pay $36 for the four apples. Four times 36 is 144. All those things I talked about that I'm not into numbers, but the Lord got me to be into numbers a little bit here. So 
the 39. And so I, again, I was like, well, I'm not sure what it means. And the Lord said, no, it's not that simple, Steve. It is 40 save one. And the Lord gave me the Bible verse, except the those days were shortened. No flesh would survive. That's what the Lord spoke to me. So Paul said that, you know, he received the 40 lashes, save one. So Jesus supposedly, you know, got 39 stripes. By his stripes were healed because the Romans gave 40, but they would always hold back one in a sign of mercy, a sign of grace. I wouldn't have got that if the Lord hadn't told me. You saw that giant 39 in the sky. It's like 39. Here's another number. What does it mean? It means, except the Lord shortened those days, no flesh would survive the tribulation, brothers and sisters. So even in the tribulation and God's wrath, he will show mercy. He will show mercy. That's what the Lord wants people to know who's going to see this video is going to be left behind. Even if you get left behind, God is holding back that one out of 40 for you to become a tribulation saint, brothers and sisters. He's not going to pour out his full, complete wrath because if he did, there wouldn't be nothing left. It would all just explode and that'd be the end of the whole creation if God gave a 40, but he's given a 39. He's holding back one for grace and mercy, brothers and sisters, on those people, even in the tribulation, brothers and sisters. So this Psalm 18 says, I, Psalm 18, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. So what I heard, those words, but it was as a song. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And that was the what we had to do to be caught up in the rapture. So this is the Psalm 18 that it comes from. I will, this is what the Lord wants us to get. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Think about the rapture. We're talking about the rapture and all that. My God, my strength, and whom will I trust? My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. How about this? Why do they blow the ram's horns at Rosh Hashanah? Jews, they don't get it. It's right in front of them. Why do they blow the ram's horn? Because when Abraham was going to offer, it reminds them of the Akidah, they call it. The Hebrew word Akidah, the binding of Isaac. Because Abraham said God will provide himself a sacrifice. So the ram's horn, the ram was caught by his horns in the thicket. So Abraham didn't sacrifice Isaac. God provided his own sacrifice. When they blow those horns, it represents God will provide his own sacrifice. The Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, that's why we. The church do not have to go through the tribulation to earn salvation, as some false teachers say who don't believe in the rapture. Oh, you've got to, you know, you've got to earn your salvation. That's what they're saying. No, God provided himself a sacrifice for us, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. There's many more things in there I don't want to forget. That's the Lord showed me like a thousand things here. I, I got to come back. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Talking about the rapture. Hallelujah. That's right. The Jews are last. They were first. Those are first to be last and last will be first. Jews were God's people first. They'll be last during the tribulation at the end. The new believers got raptured. The baby Christians got raptured because they don't know better. Plus, the last will be first and the first will be last. Too much is given, much is required for us. The Jews were persecuted in World War II, modern day times. And then now it's time for the persecution of the so-called church. And those who are God's people will come out from among them. Those who are not God's people, well, they'll join the persecutors, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm telling you from the Lord. It's a major theme in this. I need to go back and do a whole video on each one of these pieces of this. The 153 and all that. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and so shall I be saved from my enemies. We're talking about the devil, the Antichrist, the wicked people who take the mark. For us, the sorrows of death compass me. In my dream, that's what was going on. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The floods of ungodly men. We're talking about, for me, this is about the tribulation. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him even in his ears. I talk about that for healing or anything. We're talking about the number one thing you need to do. 
no matter what's happening, any distress, call upon the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Humble yourself. Number one thing we can do. Just forget about all these details of other things. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, and the snare of death was against me or prevented me, King James. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then, listen to this, then the earth shook and trembled. And the foundations also of the hills were moved and were shaken because he was wroth or angry. God's wrath. It's tribulation. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. I just talked in my last video. When you repay evil with good, you're leaping, uh, heaping coals of fire on their head. The coals of fire are God's judgment, brothers and sisters. He bowed the heavens also and came down to my tribulation. And darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. See, the God is in the tribulation. God's doing it. People talk about the Antichrist. God is sending his judgment. Darkness is God's secret place. God's coming in judgment for the world, brothers and sisters. His pavilion around about him was dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. His tabernacle, his tent, his pavilion was dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. At the brightness of that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. That was in my dream. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of the water were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered. At, the re at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. And from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. He prevented me in the day of my calamity. He saved me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He gave you a stay of execution. You know, he's the, the king. He pardoned us. He gave us a stay of execution. He brought me forth also into a large place. I think I read this verse the other day. He brought me into a large place. He delivered me also. He delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands has he recompensed me, repaid me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all of his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my sin or iniquity. Therefore, as the Lord recompensed me, paid me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou shalt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou shalt show thyself froward, which of course is devious, devious. And thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down the high looks, the proud looks. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. I quote this all the time, but I never read it, you know, the whole text to you guys or read it as one. I look at this verse. For by thee I run through a troop, through a whole army. And by my God I have leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God? Save the Lord. But who is the rock? Save our God. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He makes my feet like a deer's feet and sets me upon high places. He teaches my hands to war so that the bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast been given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand has holden me up and thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and have overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. The whole thing is awesome, brothers and sisters. Take that word in light of the church and the rapture tonight, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know. There's probably many more things. I'll have to come back to it as the Lord leads, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen, Christ. Praise God tonight. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. For the Lord is good and his love endures forevermore. Tell him. For the Lord is good and his love endures forevermore. Hallelujah, brother Al. So this, the Lord gave me lots of interpretation that I never saw before, never understood. There's more things there. I got to think I was at 39. I told that. All these other parts, moving parts that I've been wanting to know the answers to about the 153 fish and all that. The Lord has given me the confirmation. These are the things. These are the things of God, brothers and sisters. There's going to be this massive harvest. And then I was overlooking that valley with all those children in there. Hallelujah. And adults, all in white. The first person rapture, now I mentioned before, the first person I saw rapture was a black child. So I don't know if it means the literal race or what that means. I don't know. But that's what it was, and it stood out to me. I don't know why. I've said all these things about some of the people being black and white and all that. That's what I saw, and it stood out to me, so I'm sharing it. I don't know if it's literal or it means like a brand-new Christian that had not fully repented. I don't know that they got raptured. Very first one, but it's what I saw. Hallelujah, praise God. I don't know all the details of everything because the Lord has been talking to me so much. I know there's many more things. If I think about it, hallelujah. All these things the Lord dropped on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Lord told me something else about Elijah. Elijah called down fire. Elijah called down fire on two groups of men. So see, in the tribulation, Elijah's going to be calling down fire for anybody who tries to mess with him, right? So Elijah called down fire on two groups of people. Two Men and their army of 50, 51, each one, 51. He called down fire on them. And then the third one, he came to him and got down on his knees and said, man of God, have mercy on me and these 50 men. You know, and he humbled himself and he didn't get the fire. And God, you know, God spoke to Elijah and said, you can trust this man. Go with him. He won't hurt you. He's not going to do anything to you. He humbled himself. That's another lesson. But it's for Israel too. In Zechariah chapter 12. It tells about how one third of Israel will be spared. Two thirds will be destroyed. So of course, Elijah is going to be the one speaking the judgments of God, calling down fire and all that from the Temple Mount. He and Moses or Enoch or maybe the Apostle John. I don't know. Those two witnesses. Hallelujah. Praise God. So again, the 311. There's so many other things the Lord showed me about that. Other things I've never seen before in my life. That point to 311. And of course, if you went from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m., how many hours is that? Well, it's eight hours. Or 3 p.m. and 3 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. There's eight hours. So, I mean, the Lord has been talking to me about this. Eight. You know, so eight is a double portion. It's new beginnings. And it's also one day's work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Lord told me something else. During my dream, at the end of my dream, after I saw the 39, then I saw 11. Well, we know 11, like 311, Revelation 311, but I saw 11. And so someone said, oh, the 11th hour. I said 11th hour. And that's what I thought. Oh, well, it's the 11th hour. And at that time, I probably wasn't even thinking about Revelation 311. So it was the 11th hour. And the Lord said, no. The way to say it is this, the final hour. This is the last, the last hour. This is the last hour of the church age. Not, you know, so we people say, and it's common, you've heard like John Paul Jackson, prophet John Paul Jackson, he said that God called him to be an 11th hour prophet. And that's what I was thinking. Okay, the 11th hour. The Lord said, no, this is the way I want you to say it. This is the last hour, the final hour, the last hour of the church age. So what is that one, you know, is one, what I talk about, one year? The four apples that I had was the four, like four seasons. It don't necessarily mean Four seasons as in a year, maybe. But it's four seasons. And the last hour, brothers and sisters. So, of course, it could be this year. I'm saying again, I feel like the Lord is saying it's going to be this harvest. That's what I'm saying. 
and then the rapture. So things like that could happen in days. It could be on YouTube. 10,000 people could start watching me on YouTube today and all get saved. I don't know. You don't have to necessarily go places. Oh, yeah. The people that I saw in the valley, the children and the adults, they were Americans. It was America. So I will say that, Brother Daniel. They were Americans. I didn't see, even though there was there's Filipinos in America. There's a million Filipinos in America. Or maybe it's two million. It's a lot. So there could have been Filipinos in the gathering. But I basically saw black and white people. You know, it's like, well, it's America. These were all Americans. There wasn't a whole bunch of people from other countries in this dream. And I and I took that from the Lord to mean I was in America when this happened. So Because I've been praying about going to the Philippines or not. It's probably why the Lord showed me that. You know, and also the Lord had given me a word a while back. I want you to set America on fire and then you're going to fly. A few months ago. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. The last watch is the fourth watch, right? That's two. Christ is king. Kingdom. Absolutely. Yes. So you have to go back and watch it, Chrissy. Yeah. So there's a whole lot more as it's, it's just coming up to me. Pieces. The Lord gave me so much stuff. I was like, every one of these is is uh, is a message in itself. I know there's so much care. Bear. Yeah, I need to watch it again. If you I need to go back and listen to it because I was going to make notes. I'd made a little bit of notes last night, but I was like, if I start writing this down, I'm going to I'm going to forget it or get confused myself here. I just got to say it. I need to go back and watch this myself and then the parts that I don't remember. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good, brothers and sisters. So another thing, another thing about the 39, you know, less than 40. Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days. Israel was in the wilderness 40 years. You know, so 40 is like the complete judgment of God. And so there's that 39. God holds back a little grace, a little window, a space to repent for Jezebel, as it says in the book of Revelation. I gave her and her people space to repent. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it, Tabitha. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So that that uh, 311 Speedway is the one that really blew me away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, among other things. So it's the final hour, brothers and sisters of the church age. So some of you guys will take that to mean, okay, I'm watching my clock. The rapture doesn't happen in 60 earthly minutes, then that's not a word from God, you know, with God. And other people will try to calculate a thousand years as, as a day with the Lord. They'll try to calculate how many days or months is a is an hour, one twenty-fourth of a thousand years. The Lord uses expressions too, brothers and sisters. It's the last hour, the final phase of the church. Hallelujah. Final countdown. That's right. It's harvest time. That's it, Care Bear. Brother Jonathan, I know you guys are on the same sheet of music with me. Praise God for that. It's time for the final harvest. So what we need to do, and I'll say that from the Lord. God's not going to repent of this. Like the verse I read was that Ezekiel 24, whatever it was, Ezekiel 24 something. God's not going to repent of this, brothers and sisters. It's time for us to win the lost, and it's time for us to call upon the name of the Lord. And you, And I've been saying these things that over the year, over the months. The devil wants to stop us at the last minute. Just like he tried. To, I said that. I made a video saying this many times. The devil tried to kill the, the children, that, the boys that were born when Moses was born. He tried to, he killed the baby boys in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. The devil wants to stop us from being raptured, brothers and sisters. His plan is to kill, steal, and destroy each of us. And we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Keep yourself spotless from the world and help widows and orphans, as James said, perfect religion. And don't. You can do what you want to do. I'm telling you, now is not the time to play chicken with God's grace and be a hyper-gracer. It's not time to say, oh, I can play with fire and not get burnt. That's why the Lord sent me on the hyper-grace YouTube channels to confront them. Did I want to argue with these people? No. Do I want to confront them? Well, that's the problem. If you're in the prophetic ministry, particularly, you know, there's evangelists like what Brother Jonathan does, and they go to the lost. And then God has pastors who teach the flock, and then people in the prophetic. Their job is to pluck up and cast down anything that's not from God. Their job is really to do the serious rebuking of political leaders, religious leaders, or whomever. 
for me, it's well, you know, doing street evangelism is very difficult. People talk about that, how hard street evangelism is. It is very difficult. But confronting people that are supposed to be servants of the Lord, that are liars and whoremongers and abominable people, like we read that text in Revelation chapter 21, who are fakers. For me, that's the hardest. I've done I've done a lot of different things for the Lord. I, and deliverance is probably the hardest. I mentioned that before. Deliverance is probably the most difficult. How about trying to deliver people that say they're a pastor of a 2,000-member church? At least if you meet someone on the street, nobody thinks they're somebody. People that, oh, this is just some guy on the street. He's not even a Christian. Okay. What about somebody that thinks they're somebody? Or people, people think they're all of that, and they're not. That's what we're talking about. People that's calling themselves teachers and watchmen and all that online teaching that you can live in sin. I've already I've rebuked in almost every video. Better repent. It's time to repent. It's time to call upon the name of the Lord. Humble yourself. I read the text. That's Psalm 18 from the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. So many people, I'm telling you, the devil wants to catch us in that snare of the fowler. I'm an, I usually exhort you guys. I know, and I'm exhorting you, but I'm telling you, I'm warning you. Like Paul said, there's vicious wolves coming in and already in the flock. Oh, the 90% of the flock is under so-called leadership of the ravenous wolves, brothers and sisters, that Paul told us about in the book of Acts, and they will not spare the flock. Wolves in sheep's clothing that people love to keep talking about. That's 90% of preachers in this day, brothers and sisters. Do I think that's good? No, it's bad. But it is what it is. It's the truth. And so, why do a lot of people love... Why would someone get on the internet or in a church and get up there and defend a license to sin? What would motivate them to do that? Because they want to sin and they live in sin, brothers and sisters. They are speaking from their heart. Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Anybody defending sin has that sin in their life or wants to have that sin in their life. Brothers and sisters. Or they want to condone other people's sin. Why are so many liberals in the, in the West promoting the rainbow agenda. Either they're rainbow people themselves or they want to justify people they know who are rainbow people. They don't want to offend people. The gospel is a rock of offense and a stumbling block. That's where people don't get it. Jesus said your enemies will be of your own household. I preach this stuff all the time, but now we're getting serious with it. Your enemies will be of your own household, brothers and sisters. you got to stand and having done all to stand, I'm telling you, the enemy's coming in like a flood. And the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So what does that do? Like I said about Israel, you got to go to the standard. I talked about this years ago in a video, maybe a year or two ago. And Brother Gunny, he knows about this. Any of you guys that were in the military, even today in the military, they have these little flags for every platoon. Every company, they have flags. It's called a guide on. And they were used back like in the, up through the, World War I, maybe, the Civil War, World War I in America, and the, all the European army, they all did that. The Roman Empire, they all had their own guide on, their own banner. Each company has a banner, even today. And somebody carries that. And then in the old days, before modern day, the last hundred years, when they sound the trumpet uh, to retreat or sound the trumpet to charge, you know, that's what they used to do or beat a drum, maybe in some countries, whatever, you would know, go to the banner. Rally to the banner. The banner of your, you know, this is the banner of my group. Rally to the banner. This is a command by the trumpet blast. When I hear the trumpet blast, stop what you're doing and run to the banner. The guide on to the flag. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raise up a standard against him. So let me say this, as we're on this analogy. War, 
one word to describe war. You maybe you've heard him say war is hell is a famous saying, but it's chaos. The one word I would use to describe war is they say the fog of war, chaos, total chaos, brothers and sisters, total chaos. But when you're in an army, you have controlled chaos. You know, you could be the one bringing the chaos on the back, on the enemy's head. So it's a controlled chaos. You know, you know what's going on because, oh, we're going to shoot some artillery over there because you're on the team that's, you know, the good guy's army, right? We know what we're doing, even though it's still chaos. So even though I know we're about to send artillery, when that artillery starts shooting, it's going to be loud. It's going to be deafening. It's going to be earth shaking. It's going to rattle your chest. Your heart will rattle in your chest. And you will be a still, even though you know it's happening, you'll still be shocked when you hear artillery or something right behind you or this multi-launching multi rocket system, whatever, MLRS, these kind of things that they have in modern day, Patriot missiles and all that. And bomber, you know, jets dropping bombs. It's like from the Lord, even though it's your team, you know, your army, you still get shaken. You know, you're still in chaos. You're still disoriented. So that's why we always have to have that the place to go to, to go to the banner, go to the flag. We know this is our rally point. So that's what they always do in a war. You know, you have a pre-planned thing. If we get scattered, we have a rally point. As an example, one kilometer south of this location, we'll all rally there. Everybody knows it. So we get disoriented. We've already been given an order. If you guys get separated, come to the rally point we pre-designated. This is where we're going to meet. You know, and everybody knows that's the place. So that's what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. This is a war. And many of you are sitting around singing Kumbaya, Kumbaya, and you're asleep at the wheel, whatever you want to say it. Yes, the secret place of the Most High God, those who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, right? Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty, Psalm 91, verse 1. That's where we got to be, brothers and sisters. We got to be ready to rally to the right place and stay under the banner because the enemy's coming. It's been coming in like a flood. I'm telling you, this is going to be the devil's finest hour when he raises up the Antichrist, you know, when God allows him to have the Antichrist. But at the same time, it's God's finest hour. You know, the redemption of all things. So we see this enemy coming in like a flood and the Lord raising up a standard. I've talked about this years ago. I preached this in revival. The first revival I preached that was a real revival, this is what I preached. And I haven't preached it in yet. I think I might have preached it on YouTube. Maybe not. It, the Battle of Iwo Jima. Has anybody been watching me for years? Maybe I have preached it and you remember it. So the Battle of Iwo Jima, I had a vision of this in 2005. Them raising the flag on Mount Sarabachi at Iwo Jima. Famous statue in Washington, D.C. of the Marines raising the flag, American flag on Iwo Jima at Mount Sarabachi. Well, in that time, brothers and sisters, the thing that most people, you might not know, unless you're you know, uh, in a military history, it took them a long time to take that island. Now, I don't remember how many days. It was like 30 days or whatever. But this the first few days they took Mount Sarabachi. That was their goal, to take the high ground. That's a message in itself. And those Marines put that flag on top of Mount Sarabachi, and it was a long many days before they totally took the island. I preached this in the Philippines because the Philippines is a non-Christian country. And I was talking about going on the offense and, offense and taking the island. The Lord was giving me this for revival. And we did have revival when I preached this. Look, hundreds of people got saved and delivered and all this, healed, etc. So, they raised the banner on top of Mount Sarabachi. See, so what happened? The Marines, they saw the flag and they said, we took this, we took the place. We win. We've taken the island. There's the flag. And the Japanese, they saw the flag and said, uh-oh, the, Mar you know, the Americans have taken the high ground. It was a message to the enemy of demoralizing. We have raised our flag. Your flag is down and our flag is up. This is our place. So the Marines had not taken all of Iwo Jima, but they were saying, 
and decla- declaring and claiming and planting their flag, this place belongs to us. They were just taking it. The violent take it by force, as Jesus said. From the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven is, has by, is forcefully advanced and the violent take it by force. They took the place and the enemy wasn't wiped out yet. They were declaring victory and the, Amer- the Marines were rallied and motivated and fired up because, hey, the flag has been raised and the Japanese were demoralized and defeated mentally, psychologically when they saw that flag. So that's what the Lord is trying to tell us. We got to declare victory now. We have to raise the flag of Jesus, the banner of Jesus Christ now, even though the battle's not over with. It's called walking by faith. We declare the victory now. Now faith is. We know what happens at the end. Jesus is coming back. So just like with the Japanese, it was inevitable. Just like with the Nazis, it was inevitable. The handwriting was on the wall to quote from the book of Daniel. The evil, wicked people have been weighed in the balance and they've been found wanting. What is the icky, nicky, tickle parcel? The handwriting on the wall. So the Japanese, the handwriting was on the wall. America had a lot more industrial power, a lot more money, a lot more technology. The Japanese had a lot less people, limited technology, limited natural resources. The handwriting was on the wall and they were being evil. And what they did to the Chinese was much worse than the than what the, what the Nazis did to the Jews. I mentioned that the other day. Nobody talks about that. What the Japanese did to the Chinese people and Filipino people in other countries, just as much or more wicked than Hitler ever dreamed of. So God used, in that case, he used America and the allies, Australians, Canadians, all the allies, as his sword, brothers and sisters. So just like now, God wants to use us, his people, to raise up the banner, to be a sword in his hand, to bring his righteous announcement. That flag, that's what the Lord is trying to tell us. The flag announced victory. You're def- and to the enemy, it announced defeat. The flag announced to the good guys, to the army of the Lord, victory. So that's what the Lord, what we need to announce. Jesus wins, dude. Jesus wins, all you wicked people. Repent or perish. Something like that. You can say it in a nicer way if you want to. As long as you get it across, the message. You can hug trees and smile at people and pat them on the back, but tell them if they don't repent, they're going to hell. And just, you know, say it with a smile if that's what you feel like. We got too many sicker friendly, wimpy people in the church. Need to be part of the army of the Lord. We are a hospital and an army. Most people want to play medic in the hospital. Be a nurse in the hospital, and treat wicked people like, there you go, you treat wicked people like a patient in the hospital, right? So if uh, our soldiers are in the hospital and you're a nurse, you're going to be good to them. But if you have enemy prisoners of war who are your patients, I mean, you treat their wounds, but they need to change sides. They're still prisoners of war and they need to change sides, even though we show them compassion. It's against the Geneva Convention not to treat the enemy soldiers. When I was in Iraq, I was a medic, and we treated I treated over three hundred enemy soldiers myself in a twelve hour period at night one time. Me and my well, me and my assistant, me and my driver, and that's what you have to do. That's that's the Geneva Convention. You have to render aid to the enemy soldiers after you've rendered aid to your own soldiers. It's uh, international law, brothers and sisters. And so, yes, we give them compassion. But they're still the enemy soldiers. They need they need to they need to change teams. So a lot of you guys want you and all these hyper gracers and maybe seeker friendly churches, they see the enemy's people as wounded of our soldiers, but they're not. You need to start seeing yourself as a member of the army of the Lord. And this is a this is a death struggle against the enemy, brothers and sisters, powers and principalities and forces of darkness. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. It's kind of like, well, there you go. I'm using all these military analogies today. It's like the Battle of the Bulge, right? I mean, the 101st Airborne was trapped at Bastogne. And uh, 
I think the Lord told me something about that the other day. I think I mentioned it in the video in the last few months. I can't remember anything that the Lord told me sometimes, unless he reminds me. The Battle of Bastogne, the 101st Airborne was surrounded. Yeah, I had a, I saw a vision of General Patton, and I mentioned about him. Now, I talked about General Patton a few months ago about that. General Patton is the one that broke through and uh, broke, blo broke the German lines of blockade around Bastogne in the Battle of the Bulge. The 101st were surrounded and were almost wiped out. They had no food. And they were, you know, in a matter of days, you know, they would be out of ammo and food and everything. And they refused to surrender. And that's what people usually talk about, which is great. Yes, we have to refuse to surrender. It's also true that General Patton turned around his whole army and marched straight through the night nonstop, forced his soldiers no sleep, not even stopping to eat and pressed all the way. And that's why General Patton is so famous for the fact that he didn't like to obey orders from General Eisenhower. He was not politically correct, but kind of like a prophet for, of the Lord. He wasn't politically correct, but when his day to shine was there, he was the man of the hour and on the on the clock on the in the pages of history, General Patton. And he broke through, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So that's what the Lord wants us to do, brothers and sisters, never to surrender, never back down. And in this last hour, like in the dream I had, the Lord's going to snatch us out, brothers and sisters, from the snare of the fowler. So you got to hear that. The snare is closing. So you got to be sober, to be vigilant for your adversary. The devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. The devil wants to get us. And it's not about it being afraid. Peter told us to be sober, to be vigilant. The devil, what does the devil want? How does he going to kill us and destroy us? By getting us to fall into sin, brothers and sisters. By getting you to fall into sin. So hypergracism, licensed to sin, is just out of the devil's playbook, brothers and sisters. Don't fall for it. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, the Bible says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. New Testament. For those who sow to the Spirit will reap rewards, and those who sow to the flesh will reap a whirlwind. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap a whirlwind, brothers and sisters. I mean, a whirlwind, tornado, tribulation, storms. Not good. Hallelujah. That's all I have today, brothers and sisters. I've got to do some more praying on all this. May you be found hidden in Christ, brothers and sisters, in the last hour of the church age. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on the prize, as they say. Don't look up from the grindstone, however you want to say it. The Lord is coming to take us home soon. Don't let the devil try to get you. Don't give him an inch. If you give the, inch, the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. But if the devil does take a mile from you, Call upon the name of the Lord. Repent. If we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Is that a you got a do you have a different account you use or something? Is that a different kin? Hallelujah. Are you is that a different kin? Because uh maybe Mr. Ken has different accounts. I don't know. Is that Ken? I, I, I can't keep up with all these things. Hallelujah. God bless you guys tonight. Today, wherever you are, have a blessed day, blessed night, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Sister Mary, God bless. Rhoda, Rhonda, I haven't heard a word for you. I don't know. Maybe you're one of those people. I don't know. Hallelujah. I don't watch anybody's videos. Don't pay attention to what everybody looks like. Hallelujah. Rhonda, Christ is King. Jonathan Brown, Rita, God bless. Sharon, God bless. God is holy. Dottie, Anna, Gloria, Jeff. Praise God. God bless you guys. Ken W. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Gunny, if I missed anybody, sorry about that. Brother Jonathan, be chill. Okay, Ken, I think you've been on here before. There's a there's also a Mr. Ken. And I didn't know if he changed the name of his channel, so you're a different Ken. Okay, I think you've been on here before. All right, God bless Brother Al, Brother Lee, very beautiful. God bless you today, sister. Brother Daniel, God bless, brother. Hallelujah. Lee, hallelujah. God bless. Anthony. Amen. Yes, brother. Watch from the beginning. God bless, brother. You know, we gave I gave that word from the Lord for your son. You know, I don't remember anything, but the Lord is reminding me of that. I, you know, I, that's really hard for me to ever remember that. So I thank the Lord for that. Brother Al, praise God, brother. I hope y'all are going to be coming up. 
and then not this Friday, but the next, I guess. I know y'all been busy, but if you're coming the next week, just let me know, brother. Hallelujah. Brenda, God bless. Care Bear, Mary Hart. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Don't give up. You're on the brink of a miracle. Don't give in. You are not alone. Yes, Mary, Aggie, Gunny, praise God. Amen. That's the word I gave you, Brother Gunny. I saw it. I saw you in that picture too. Hallelujah. The dream I had of the graduation picture, like a military picture too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. God bless you guys. Yes. Amen. Stay strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Well, praise God, Anthony. That's good to hear. Christina, God bless, sister. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He can work with those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. Those chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you they'll drop powerless behind you when you praise him. Hallelujah. Praise God. The best version that the Lord gave me, the Lord gave me one version of I will call upon the name of the Lord about 10 years ago. And I mentioned it in a video 10 years ago. It's by a rock Christian group called Petra. How about that? Petra, where the Jews will be in the second half of the tribulation. Hallelujah. They don't take the mark. Hallelujah. Yes. God is holy. Are you watching? Uh, I guess the new year began on the 19th. That's what the Lord told me. Amen, Jonathan. We did have 118 people watching at one point. Maybe more than that. It's down to 91 now. I'm going to wrap it up, brothers and sisters. God bless you all, okay? God bless. I'll see you in the sky, Lord, in the sky. I'll see you soon. I'll be back on here tonight, tomorrow night, something. I'll probably let this video stay up because if I make a new one, it'll block this one. And this one is the one people need to see. So far, maybe the Lord will give me something even better when I get off of here. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just along for the ride like you guys, brothers and sisters. We're all just along for the ride, whatever God wants to do. Right? I'm riding shotgun with Jesus. Jesus has take, got the wheel, right? Amen. 123. Okay. I'm riding shotgun with Jesus. He's got the wheel. Let his will be done. Let Jesus take the wheel, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Okay. Second Samuel 22. I'll check it out, Mary Hart. I haven't had a chance to really even look up. The Lord gave me so much. I haven't had a chance to look it all up. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, Christina. Yeah. 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 The Lord, it goes about. In a video I mentioned about 10 years ago, I said to the Lord, I want to listen to something besides the regular music, Christian music. And the Lord, you know, I said, I want to hear something that's like more faster paced because I was doing some push ups and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to play worldly music. And the Lord's like, there's hard rock Christian music you can listen to. I was like, what? I should have known. And the Lord said, Petra. He gave me the name Petra. I didn't even know there was a group called Petra. I looked it up and there it was. That's the song that the first song that I heard. I will call it's uh, live from Washington, D.C. in 1986. Petra did a concert at the Washington, uh, the, the mall there in front of the Capitol building. Can you imagine how far America has fallen? They had a young people's great big, I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands of uh, Christian young people there. They were doing a concert in 1986. You can see parts of it on YouTube. That's the recording I have. I will call upon the Lord from there. And it's it's very anointed for me. And now I see why. After 10 years, now I know why, because that's the song that I was listening to that we needed to do to be for the rapture, to be rapture ready. 10 years in the making. How about that? Hallelujah. Well, my dad being a race car driver has been a lot more years than that in the making. 311 Speedway. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, Striper. I've, I've seen that, but I didn't listen to him. Only Petra is the only one I've listened to. I've seen that name when I was looking at the Petra videos. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day, blessed night, okay? See you guys soon. Philip's on here. I know. It's, he's the king of repeats. I know. I should already be finished. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I haven't seen, has uh, Ray been on here? I think he was on here earlier. Betty, God bless. Paul, God bless. E.M., God bless. Hallelujah. Miss S., God bless. That's it, Miss S. Thank you. Yes, it's in, from 1986. Amen. <laughs> brother Philip, God bless my Canadian maple syrup loving brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Canada. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right, Brother Al. Yeah, there's a uh, praise music of all kinds. That's absolutely true. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is how we overcome. A rap, a Christian rap song that I've heard called This Is How We Overcome. 
Hallelujah. And that's, as a matter of fact, it's out of Canada. How about that? Yes. Praise God. Yes. God bless you guys. Okay. Hallelujah. God bless.